Thank you, thank you, Guido, for the for the introduction. And I see at least some faces uh, exactly that I already know and that I'm uh, working working with um, as a customer success manager. Like you said, uh, joined joined Lina X a year before, so um, yeah, actually actually got quite some some insights now since this is quite a long time for for that company. Um, also, as Guido just introduced, I'm gonna um, tell you a little bit about how to. Um, set up a, little, uh, a lean standards governance with LeanIX and uh, especially we yeah, are pointing out um, some views that you can actually capitalize on uh, some of the standards views then one of the topics that is uh, of yeah, major importance um, for me and um, from my side and as you have been in my, uh, my other workshops you know that the topic of communication and actually yeah, gathering data and keeping it at one source is a, is a major point that is also yeah, um, helping you a lot um, yeah, actually attacking or tackling your, your governance issues however your government, governance uh, might look like yeah? so um, yeah, actually in the morning, today, also yesterday, yeah, we were pretty much confronted with uh, with really, let's say, innovative uh, governance governance approaches. It might be just um, possible ex actually to execute because those um, people at Zalando, for example, were actually able to start start on a green field. Yeah, so so that makes it maybe a little bit easier. Um, I'm also going to talk um, today about um, about the topic from a perspective and also from a, um, from from customer experience later on in this presentation. Yeah, where you actually um, at the point where you have to um, take care of the I think it was uh, stuff of yesterday. Um, yeah, so so where you actually have systems in place that you that you need to need to address. So as I said, it's going to be a little bit of, of two parts. Um, first one is um, enabling um, yeah, the standards governance in Lina X, what you got to do, what are the information you need. And um, then the second one is, um, yeah, let's say, how more business related topics like um, risk management and especially obsolescence management, I'll come to that in a second, um, yeah, actually are the driver for change there and um, yeah, actually get the get the ball rolling so that you at least have a chance also to get deeper into this topic of uh, yeah, applying the standards you, um, you, you um, set or that you um, actually newly discovered. <clears throat> this point, um, I will just go here. Um, what we learned so far from, from our customers um, throughout throughout their journeys in regards to standards governance and technology standardization, it's pretty much that they, in the first hand, are actually aiming at um, yeah, gaining um, efficiency gains. Yeah? And that might be, on the one hand, related to really um, monetary gains, yeah? as standards and using standards come with um, yeah, actually favorable um, license agreements, commercial agreements and stuff, but also in regards to processes that, um, yeah, if you introduce frame contracts with your strategic partners um, that, might, that might actually offer your standards um, are yeah, far more streamlined than um, taking new partners or new suppliers uh, on board. Um, every time, so this is this is of one of the major um, yeah, efficiency gains that we that we actually get as a feedback from this let's say major perspective or from the perspective that would come to your mind um, when you first think of it, but um, actually also um, more implementation related. Um, the second point, it actually provides a great yeah great source for your project, for your solution architectures to just have a yeah, reference to look at yeah, and see, okay, what standards do I actually have in place? What services could I build my, um, my solution on or my projects on? And um, actually take one of the standards as it suits their needs. And if not, yeah, find smart ways to actually say, hey, I have a little bit different need and um, what do you think about my solution? Could, could, I actually, could I actually introduce it? Could I use it? Is this usable? Probably 
as, as an upcoming standard. <clears throat> and this pretty much refers to the third point I, I mentioned here. Yeah, um, your standards governance should actually um, yeah, enable you to communicate with your, with your experts. Get the feedback, yeah, since um, my perception is, or my belief even is, that you, that you actually won't, if you're just doing a top-down, um, you, you will be able to maybe define standards, but you won't be able to um, keep track of um, development on, on new technologies, introduce that um, to, your, to your company, but you've got to learn from your, um, from your experts, uh, let's say, in the front line, um, yeah, since, since this is the major source of um, yeah, new technologies that come up. And the conclusion there is really that um, technology standards management kind of needs to, to bridge the gap between this um, top-down directives yeah, that also need to, need to be set to a certain degree, especially in regards to, to technologies. But um, on the other hand, um, yeah, also give you the chance to, to um, see the advent of, of new technologies yeah, and actually incorporate those in your portfolio. So this is pretty much the yeah, hard part, um, hardest part about this, about this use case, let's say. <clears throat> in regards to LinaX, um, what are the parts that we for most need to take into account when we want to actually tackle this tackle this use case and this is um, on the one hand it's for sure the part of the in the technology architecture especially IT components and technology stack so if you're not 100% um, familiar with the, with the um, data model of, of Lina X um, we define the IT component as the um, actual software hardware or IT services that you have in place so let's say a Red Hat ES 6.5 operating system or a MySQL database or an Oracle database, SAP database and so on and so on and you already see that um, you might have a lot of different databases yeah, which you need to or a lot of different IT components which you need to categorize that's what you actually do in the tech stack, which is pretty much a stable model of, let's say, technology categories like databases, operating systems, middleware, and so on and so on, that you'll be able to have that whole zoo of IT components kind of, um, kind of categorized. And um, yeah, this is kind of the requirement to get this, re um, this relation set to finally have the chance to, to yeah, build reports and make this whole portfolio a little bit, little bit manageable. <clears throat> On the other hand, um, important for um, technology management as a whole is for sure the, the relationship um, to your information systems architecture, which is probably in the end the main, the main driver since it's also more related to the business or the business needs yeah, um, where you see like, okay, what application is using which kind of technology, what's going to change if a business requirement comes in, or if I, if I um, actually get rid of different, different applications. So this is also major information for the project, and for triggering actually change, um, this will be the, yeah, this will actually be the point where the, where the change will be most, um, most certainly triggered. Yeah? So um, from our experience um, this is then um, definitely necessary to get that, to get that um, relationship um, actually established. And finally um, one step where I have the um, feeling or I, or I have the experience which is, which is quite hard yeah? to actually also put actions behind the change so relate a project fact sheet, yeah, but of course not only relating the project fact sheet, but also put action behind it. So you might want to be in line with your, with your PMO, IT project management, um, yeah, as soon as you also want to, want to move to new, new technologies. And I'll um, go into an, go into an um, example there. Um, how do we actually um, 
define standards now on a more more granular level um, of of a different of an, a certain IT component. Here we are talking about a MySQL database. Um, we are doing that at the relation between the between the IT component fact sheet and the and the technology stack. Yeah, we are saying like okay, we are by default we are coming up with these um, these kind of categories. We will say like okay, it's we are still investigating. Yeah, if this could be if this could be a standard or not, we say like okay, this is approved. Yeah, so you can use it right away if you're on a project. I mean, also no further action required. Yeah, the solution architects knows that they can actually use this product, and might yeah the impact might be that they are just on a on a faster project track yeah they don't need to go through step two three four and five but go on to steps step sec, six right away um, then we have this conditional approval let's say um, technology is okay in a certain context um, you have this uh, you can you have the value of retiring uh, that you are currently retiring in, in technology anyways or even the stamp that is that something is just not approved yeah it's unapproved so um, there's no way you can actually use it in your in your projects and this is pretty much the categorization um, we are coming up with um, by default as you are advanced and um, depending on your edition um, you know that you could come up with um, with your own classifications there also right so um, as your concept for standardization um, takes takes some other kind of um, yeah, categories into consideration, yeah, you could actually actually adapt that. Um, although I've not seen something that goes uh, really far away from from that standard, anyways. And um, third point there, besides the um, resource classification, um, yeah, we really urge into yeah, getting into this uh, topic of uh, actually maintaining lifecycle information at the IT components too. Um, in comparison to the applications, we are, they are not talking about um, your life cycle. Um, so saying how long do I want to run this application? Yeah, this is what you do on the application level. Um, but you take into account the, the provider life cycle saying like okay as soon as um, this technology is end of life you might have the chance to get into an extended support um, but we know what happens the provider will say okay I'll just patch the bigger vulner vulnerabilities on the one hand so your risk goes up and um, on the other hand um, you will not get that for free anyways in extended support so the longer you are on uh, obsolete technologies yeah, the more the more it would cost you. So this is the, um, let's say, basic logic also behind this uh, use case and how actually then change on the on a technology, <clears throat> on the technology um, layer is is driven. How does it look like in the tool? I just go here to the supporting section in the fact sheet, at the technical stack. Let's say relational database in in this case. <coughs> Have the resource classification there, and it's um, yeah. Depending on your maturity in using Linux, you'll be pretty familiar. <clears throat> Sorry with that. You actually have the information right there on the fact sheet. So um, <clears throat> this is this is what you need to do um, if you are doing it manually. Yeah, we have certain degrees of automation that we offer there. Um, the one is for sure the, the ServiceNow integration, which will actually yeah, take, take a lot of work from you. Um, the other one, and I'll just quickly show how that looks like, is the use of the Technopedia integration. We'll just create a new fact sheet. It's the Internet Explorer in this, in this case. You'll get a list of, um, list of uh, suggestions create it, link it, um, and um, yeah, the Technopedia catalog actually comes with the basic, basic information there. So it will actually link, your, um, link the IT component to the correct provider, comes with, um, comes with uh, especially this lifecycle information of the vendor 
um, that is actually directly introduced to the fact sheet too. So um, quite some, some savings on, on efficiency there. So in regards now to the, to the views and the basic views, I, I need to say we are, we are offering in, in Lina X. This is, this is what you'll see or what you'll use. It's the IT component landscape. Yeah? You'll actually see all your IT components, so actually the, all the databases and so on and so on, clustered into this, um, yeah, into the technical stacks. Yeah, I think it's hard to read, I know, but you're talking about databases here, relational databases, we drill it, drill it down or differentiate it more or here actually middleware, drilled down to application servers or, and, and messaging. So um, this is something like the technical stack, we have a best practice there. According to the maturity, you might have your own, own model there. Um, but this is the view you want to actually see, to see, okay, what are currently the standards I can use, um, or that are, let's, let's say it differently, what are the, IT components are used and what's their status of approval. Yeah? And this is also the thing that you actually want to provide into your projects, to your technology architects, um, to, to actually have those lists of, um, of, of uh, usable standards. So um, one major point that came actually up from time to time in the discussions here and uh, also in the one or the other presentation is that um, yeah, companies are then relying on, let's say like book of standards and um, actually just, just what I thought, uh, uh, just, just what I said, like this list of standards that are, that are actually usable. And um, one good hint on that side is, for example, the use of, um, of bookmarks, yeah, where you also have this pre-filtered views saying like, okay, what are my um, database standards, device standards, middleware standards, and so on and so on. So you make the life already a little bit easier. Yeah? So using the standards, you are just um, giving away those simple lists. And um, yeah, actually your stakeholders don't need this three, four extra clicks to, yeah, to actually find that list, get that view, um, but simply simplify it a little bit and um, yeah, actually provide the information that, that they need before they jump out of the tool again, which you obviously um, don't want. Um, and the second point, and I'll show, just, just show a GIF there and a screenshot there afterwards, is um, yeah, actually to enable your um, architects or your stakeholders to also communicate then in the tool. Yeah? Make them familiar with um, remind me function, with comment functions, um, with maybe using the survey. Yeah? I'll uh, come to that in a second. Um, yeah, to actually get information on standards, on um, regulatory questions also yeah, in, regards, in regards to the governance and actually catch them, catch them in the tool, catch them at one source. Um, I know there's currently one, one talk going on from, from Andreas Weinberger, who's way more going into the direction of um, yeah, handling governance in, in general, and he's from a bank, so he's, he's highly regulated, and he also says, in regards to regulations, you can aim at the 100%, yeah, but as you, just just um, throw the error, it's probably not going to hit the 100%. Yeah? So you messages, you can't answer it right away. But even if you make, make sure that you um, have a topic in mind, yeah? started a conversation about it, maybe get some action about, um, out of it to, to tackle that, um, the impact if you're audited, if you um, receive questions on that will be, will be lowered by far as soon as you somehow, um, as somehow addressed some topics. And um, this is at a point, um, yeah, just, just enable your, your colleagues to raise questions, communicate um, within the tool, and keep it at one, at one um, source. So in regards to the bookmarks, how does it actually look like? I think I'm, for now, just 
first just switching to the to the correct view in that heat map. Um, want to filter it down a little bit to the active um, to the active technologies there by by today. We see like okay, this he's, he has his technology technology stack under control. There's just one database standard, and <laughs> but um, you actually see how how you would use this kind of um, report also in a dynamic way that you can narrow it down, um, narrow down your search and actually use for the information you just need. Also taking life cycles into account um, so that you, that you see your current baseline all the time. <clears throat> and then I think this now, um, should it be? Yeah, you're looking for just a certain technical stack that you want to provide to um, to your colleagues, get the right view, and actually uh, save it as a bookmark um, here with a correct, um, actually differentiated by a correct um, by a correct naming convention. Yeah, we are looking into uh, a logic on yeah how we could actually also cluster bookmarks and stuff. So this is the feedback we received from you. We think like we couldn't actually improve. And um, thinking one step further or in a different direction, um, yeah, utilizing those bookmarks, for example, in an, within a an confluence integration, yeah, that might uh, even make it, make it a little bit easier for you to structure that information or actually present that information in a structured way. So, um, so this, is, this is the hint um, on, on that side. <clears throat> yeah, and then finally, just a little little tip um, how you could actually, if, if you need to do it, all right, uh, I'll just go back, if you need to actually maintain um, your IT landscape or the technology landscape or maybe even part of it um, manually, um, we have this great feature to actually work within, um, within our matrices. So if you need to go into workshop um, situations, if you need to go into interviews, um, I can just encourage to actually not use Excel, but work within within the matrices, and um, yeah, while you are interviewing your experts, actually get the data into the matrix, and um, yeah, get an even more full full picture of your of your technology architectures there. So yeah, as I said, this is especially useful if you are more bound to a manual manual process there. Um, you might be more happy if you have an integration to your CMDB, um, which, whichever it um, should be, or to use the help of, of Technopedia there. <clears throat> okay, now um, finally, um, one, uh, finally in regards to the first point, um, one major tool that we see being used to actually find out, okay, um, why is the solution used? Could it be a standard? What's the context? Does it make sense to, to um, approve it conditionally, for example? It's again the, um, with the help of, of surveys. And as I said, I'm a big promoter of the surveys because it just uh, yeah, enables you to reach out um, to your experts easily. Yeah? And on the other side, um, yeah, just lowers the hurdle for your experts to actually work in the tool. I see that as a major challenge. If you ask somebody, hey, can you just maintain this information here, and this, this person just needs to click through from the home button to the inventory, apply a filter, jump into the fact sheet, and then find the right, the right information that actually needs to be edited. You can make it make your life and your your user's life way easier if you set up an, a survey. You can have a, a standard survey, especially in this purpose. And then um, I'll show it in a second. It will just show yeah some regular questions and the part of the survey, uh, of the fact sheet that you actually want to have fill out filled out. So say like just the resource classification and not all the other information that you see see on a fact sheet. And um, as I said, I see that as a great great chance and also see people or customers being really successful mastering the the use of um, using the survey. So um, to give you an impression how that looks like, I actually get an email like that with a mail. And then it goes like, yes, I'm the technical expert. 
you go through these easy questions on standardization and this is actually where you see like I right you just see the the information you choose before it looks right just like the fact sheet like okay please retire it's too insecure and you save it and how um, does it actually appear um, on the fact sheet um, it's just edited there yeah, right so you got you got all the information right away at the fact sheet yeah without any additional um, efforts and those um, other questions will all be recorded in the in the um, survey tab that is also part of the fact sheet yeah, as you as you click through it and um, without going in too much detail there was a survey section um, uh, there was a survey workshop could also make use of uh, of the API to send out those uh, surveys regularly to not be yeah not in a need to actually trigger it manually um, all the time so um, depending on the use case this might might also be a really great really great help for you <clears throat> yeah and um, that's pretty much the let's say the frame on how you um, handle can handle standards in in Lina X, the major views, the major um, the major um, fact sheets from the technology architecture perspective um, that you can use, and again this um, the the um, communication features that you actually should um, capitalize on. And um, I'll now give an example from one of our bigger customers also, which. Um, yeah, who's actually driving the modernization of their um, IT component or their technology architecture landscape by obsolescence. Yeah, so what they do, they having a strict view on, okay, what IT components are end of life, so not supported anymore by the vendor. Yeah, um, what are the impacted applications? Yeah, they are kind of categorized category a b c some some other some other categories <clears throat> and they run with the statistics they run into a board meeting once a month and um, actually say like okay what's what are we going to tackle next what are the next projects we're going to set up and um, they actually get into this use case um, with with two reports one is a native report that i'm just just showing here but um, I'm quite sure not everybody is aware of this kind of kind of heat map that I'll be showing. Um, we call it the technology risk view. Yeah? And what does it do? Right, right here you see the capabilities, the blue ones, yeah? the structure. And actually nested in these capabilities you see all the applications that are being used to fulfill this um, business function capabilities. So um, nothing new there. But um, the heat map um, is, is actually not taking um, information into account that is, um, that is attached to the play application itself, but it crawls through all IT components that are somehow connected um, to this application. Might even take two or three hops if you have more complicated, requires required by um, relationships and walks through and sees like, okay, are there IT components that are already behind their end of life date, so obsolete, and will turn red, or if not, it stays green. If it's in a vendor phase out, it will um, be yellow. So it gives you a first indication of, um, of actually um, where to look. And it's just the thought, is just around the corner that you will be aware of, okay, um, narrowing down your uh, sorry your your business capabilities to the let's say most relevant most business critical um, so this gives you a great initial idea on how to narrow actually down um, down this view and then what really caught the ah, there's first one gif I actually say like okay I want to change to just the uh, important capabilities. You see there's a vulnerability or something obsolete. You'll go down and see like, okay, I'm running this application on an old, on an old database. Paying a lot to, for, for the extended support. Maybe it's insecure if it handles PII 
it uh, might be even more more sensitive so you can actually see that you'll open up a lot of use cases um, in regards to old technology yeah where you could uh, might want to switch to to standards but based on yeah more business related context here going in through the through the applications and that's what I wanted to say so what really caught the attention of the of the board um, and um, yeah where actually all this all this um, governance yeah um, technology governance in in this case also relies on is a, is a custom report that um, actually quantifies all um, yeah all the information that we already saw in the system yeah but which is which is saying like okay how many business implications are impacted by obsolete software products that I'm running yeah and it's uh, I mean it's really a high level there but um, uh, the uh, directive of the management is okay until the end of the year I don't want to see any red um, red part here anymore and it's not that it's that they want to get rid of all the obsolete technology until the end of the year that's not possible yeah but um, they came up with a logic of saying okay it's either supported it's addressed yeah so if they relate and project to it and have some some information also maintained there it switches to okay it's obsolete but addressed that's okay for them yeah and then finally the obsolete ones um, and those are the ones that they really want to get rid of <clears throat> they have some additional information here on the on the right side that might be a little bit um, secondary but um, another yeah, vital information or vital feature in this report is then um, yeah, the, the time picker here where they say like okay it doesn't make sense for us to just look at our baseline and see uh, where do we have absolute technology but they are actually looking I think one and a half years into the future so this is roughly the, the planning cycle there <clears throat> and they will get this um, statistics here so they look into the future where they see like okay here something is happening there are six software products that are actually um, that are actually getting obsolete and it's um, what does it say it's actually impacting about 20 different applications so I don't know, something's happening there server OS uh, is, is running out of support so way up front um, they are aware of um, they are of change that needs to happen yeah, to not run into the situations of obsolescence and um, yeah they have actually connected this this approach with then looking into okay what are what are our standards that we could use there yeah or what are actually new standards that we could introduce uh, in this situation so um, yeah and they they have their goggles there to actually look um, I think it's up to three years that they can can look into the um, future there <clears throat> yeah and then finally also also from an um, report perspective um, we have seen it earlier so um, it's initially introduced by by Zalando this um, this technology radar it's um, the concept itself it's, it's based on ThoughtWorks and uh, Incovia also publishes it in the in the store so Incovia as a product partner I mean it's it's more or less the um, technology landscape <laughs> um, yeah but um, actually yeah basically maybe a little bit more um, yeah appealing yeah um, having this technology radar you have different um, let's say technical yeah it's technical stacks like general techniques platforms concepts different uh, infrastructure elements you want to use and um, there you'll have um, these categories of yeah they are on hold they're incubating um, the, they are really emerging or they are even mature yeah so that you will also um, have on your mind based on on this radar there okay what's actually maybe the innovativeness um, of the technology I, I might want to use um, on the other hand um, yeah what's what's the um, let's say risk of a technology if I do introduce it if it might 
not get mature if I, or if I later on don't want to use it as a standard. So um, great view also here. And um, as I said, uh, it will be available in the, in the store. Um, it comes with all the basic functionalities also that Lina X is using. So you, you can actually use the filter, filter up there and just want to look for, for the incubating technologies. So um, if you're in the topic and if you're in the topic of really capturing also um, yeah, uh, technologies in the advent, um, this is, yeah, for sure something you want to have a look at, play around and see also regarding in regards to your, to your mat uh, maturity, how you can actually um, use that. Um, as a takeaway or three takeaways, um, I would <coughs> like you to take the following um, here from that session. It's um, the one hand, on the one hand, yeah, maintain a constant or constantly an overview about the technologies that you have in use and also yeah, give an approval status to them, so the resource classification. Um, be aware of new technologies yeah, and keep your tech landscape up to date. Have a look into the future using, for example, the technology radar and if you need also maybe the resources um, that you need for that or capitalize on the knowledge of your experts in the, in the projects and that actually makes it, um, makes it possible, uh, makes it um, a requirement that you base your standards governance on a strong communication, keep the communication in one tool or at least in one, one place so that it won't get lost in somebody's email inbox or something like that so all the vital, vital information stay object oriented on the fact sheet, on the technology and is actually, yeah, actually available also for, for other people. So um, this is the three key takeaways. Um,